In this section, we'll consider a more interesting example of a Riemann surface of the function f of z equals square root of 1 minus z squared, with the branch specified by the condition of f of 2 is equal to i times square root of 3. We will build a disk chain starting with the disk centered at point 2 and of the radius 1 half. From this disk, we can reach any point of the complex plane and build the respective analytic continuation of our function. But the situation here is a bit richer than for simple cubic root function. Have a look at disk chains presented at left and right figure on your screen. In the left figure, function comes back to its original value after just a single rotation in the complex plane. While on the right figure, two windings are needed for the function to restore its value. In this case, it's clear that two distinct locally analytic functions can be constructed at each point, with the exception, of course, of branch points at z equals plus minus 1. However, the connection rules allow for the construction of two distinct Riemann surfaces. Let us first describe these surfaces using phase portraits. The first option is now presented in the figure. It corresponds to two semi-infinite branch cards starting at point negative 1 and 1 and stretching to minus infinity and plus infinity respectively. And you can easily deduce the conduction rules from the color code of the arguments of our function. For example, the upper bank of the right branch card of the first Riemann sheet should be glued to the lower bank of the right branch card of the second Riemann sheet, and vice versa. And the same for the left branch card. Now consider a second option, which is now presented on your screen, and it corresponds to the branch card connecting points negative 1 and 1. And here again you deduce a similar connection rules. Namely, the upper bank of the branch card of the first Riemann sheet should be glued with the lower bank of the branch card of the second Riemann sheet, and vice versa. And with these connection rules we again described the topological structure of our Riemann surface. And now of course we can visualize it. And here it is. The first Riemann surface. And the second one. And here again pay attention that despite self-intersections, you can slip from one sheet to another only through the branch card. So be careful. And to see how this machinery works, let us study some simple example, namely the integral along the contour which is positioned on two Riemann sheets. And here we go. Let us consider a multivalued function f of z, which is equal to the log of 1 minus z squared. For this function, only semi-infinite branch cards are available. So we'll draw them from 1 to plus infinity and from negative 1 to minus infinity. This log function is infinite valued, and the result its Riemann surface contains infinite amount of sheets. So here it is, let me show it for you. Now the amazing peculiarity of this Riemann surface is that one can draw an eight-shaped contour without self-intersections. Now it is presented in the screen, but let me draw it for you using just projections. So here it is. It starts at the lower bank of the right branch card and goes to the upper bank of the left branch card. Then it slips on the second sheet and starts on the lower bank of the left branch card and ends on the upper bank of the right branch card, where it is reconnected with its start point. So our assignment is to find the integral of our log function along this contour. First of all, let us choose the regular branch of our log function. And it is chosen in such a way that the function is real as x belongs to the segment from negative 1 to 1. The key idea to compute such integrals is of course a suitable contour deformation. For example here, the arc of the contour positioned on the first Riemann sheet can be shrunk into a linear segment connecting branch points negative 1 and 1. So let us do this. As the contour arrives at the vicinity of point negative 1, it needs to slip on the second Riemann sheet. To do so, it has to path along the infinitesimal circle in the counterclockwise direction. Therefore, the argument of the function adds the value to pi. 
Simultaneously, the second arc of the contact position on the Riemann sheet below is shrunk into the same linear segment again, going from negative 1 to 1. But as the contour on the second Riemann sheet arrived in the vicinity of point 1, it needs to perform a second rotation around infinitesimal circle, this time at point 1, and in the clockwise direction. And the argument of the function adds value minus 2 pi. Therefore, returning to the original value of the function on the upper Riemann sheet. And this way the contour closes. The integrals along infinitesimal circles vanish as the radio of the circle tends to zero. And the result, our integral is reduced to a simple combination of two linear integrals of simple function. The first integral from 1 to negative 1 of function log of 1 minus x squared dx, while the second integral from negative 1 to 1 of function log of 1 minus x squared plus 2 pi i dx. And you see that these integrals have common term, the log function, which simply cancel when we sum them up. So only 2 pi i term remains, and we obtain 4 pi i as the result of the integration. This is the standard practice of the integration along the contour positioned on different Riemann sheets. You simply need to deform a contour into something more suitable, and then either using the residual theorem or something even simpler as in our case. In your homework you will encounter integrals with more interesting functions, but I hope you won't have any problem with them if you use just similar techniques. So good luck! Thank you.